his ex Tim McGough. And despite all the evidence against him, just wait until you hear McGough's story of what happened that night. It's a miracle Leslie Bassinelli is alive. She looked death in the face and survived. <laughs> but with a horrifying tale. He yanked me back again by my ponytail. And he said to me, say goodbye. This is your last In her first TV interview, Leslie describes the sheer terror. That was the most horrific moment of my life. Because I thought I was going to die. After her ex-boyfriend, Tim McGough, chased her and her boyfriend while driving and tried to kill them. If I recall correctly, um, he hit us around 60 miles an hour when we were going about 35. <laughs> and when we hit the guide rail, the airbag exploded in Craig's face and he was like knocked out briefly and I thought he died. I just thought I saw my best friend die. So I shook him. And I kept saying, Hoover, Hoover. At one point, I was waiting for bullets to come shooting through the car windows. Like, I just, I don't know, it was awful. And for people to tell you that there's nobody to help you. That's what they're supposed to be there for. Leslie was used to surviving. She had finally left the father of her children after she says he became controlling and abusive. But she never imagined one dark night would turn so brutal. When I started to run, I saw Tim standing in the middle of the roadway with a knife like this. It just this awful, evil glare and no emotion he just said i'm gonna kill both of you he put the knife in my mouth and sliced it from lip to cheek and then she grabbed a hold of her throat and i thought that uh she was dying right there but they escaped the nightmare barely you can tell that he put the knife inside of her mouth and cut her this way. You can see that the, the wound that she had was exactly the way that she described and how he attacked her. And when you look at the blade of the knife, it had a circular blade, so you can see how he would have just cut her. And it was so clear that he, was, that he wanted her dead. I thought that I lost my best friend. Leslie's rushed to the hospital with a deep gash across her face. My mom came over to me and I said, look what he did to me. And I showed her my face. And when she dropped the tissue, or whatever it was, I just, I mean, said, sorry. And she just cried and she hugged me. And what saved Leslie's life? This is actually the item of property that saved her life. Remember, when Leslie left the house, she put on a winter scarf. That scarf saved her. McGough's knife didn't pierce the thick material. So if I didn't have that on, I really wouldn't be here today. Craig would have watched me die in front of him. Oh my God. Um, I mean, but for the scarf, she, she would, this would be a murder case instead of an attempted murder case. Turns out the car McGough turned into a tank had been stolen earlier that day. And looking inside, cops make a disturbing discovery. They found a loaded 22, three two-liter bottles of gasoline, soda bottles in a backpack. They said that he had about 70 bullets in his pocket and a Bic lighter. He was prepared to do some damage. Cops show Crime Watch Daily the evidence they say McGough had with him. And chillingly, they believe Leslie and her boyfriend weren't all he was after. They say he may have had mass murder on his mind. Our speculation was, well, he had three bottles of gasoline, and there's three ways in and out, in and out of Leslie's parents' house. So, our, I mean, our speculation was that maybe he was going to torch the house, and as they were running out of the house, shoot them. Something dangerous was going to happen at that home. Tim McGough pleads not guilty even turns down a plea deal of 10 years and takes the stand in his own defense at trial. 
it was surprising that he was he did testify and it was even more shocking as to what he testified to the knife he said accidentally opened up how it was an accident that he, that Leslie could have sustained those injuries it just did not make any sense and the jury saw right through that we really knew that his his story was not holding up and it was a pleasure to really cross examine him then on those after less than three hours of deliberation, McGough is found guilty on all 15 counts, including attempted murder. Instead of the 10 years he was offered in the plea deal, he receives a minimum of 21 years behind bars. We got 21 years minimum, which was, which was tremendous, and uh, it, was, it certainly brought justice to the family. At least for 21 years, they'll have some peace. I believe wholeheartedly that if that individual were to be released that everybody's life is endangered in this family. For Leslie and Craig, the physical scars have healed, but the emotional scars are a different story, especially those of Leslie's young son. He blamed himself. And for a six-year-old to tell you, you know, Mom, I'm sorry. If I just would have went to Daddy's that night, none of this would have ever happened. How do you explain to him that it doesn't matter if it was that night or if you went or not. It could have been some other night and it was gonna, going to be some other night. For his part, Craig made a courageous romantic gesture to try and seize control over this tragedy. Only a week after the attack, he drove Leslie back to the scene of the crime. My heart just kind of sank and I started to cry and I'm like, I can't, I can't be here. And I told her that I wanted to make this place happy as it you know as it could be even, even though something horrible had just happened to us the week before and that's when he took the box and he said i was gonna wait till your birthday <laughs> in may but i didn't want you to think that i was going anywhere and he asked me to marry him and of course i said yes and i thought that was a kind of remarkable it was a nice play by mr hoover Today, Leslie shares her remarkable story to bring hope and courage to other victims of domestic violence. I want him to know that he, because of a senseless, selfish act, he doesn't get to see his children grow up. He didn't win. This time, I'm on top and he lost. And that in itself is empowering to me. He didn't break me and he's not going to.